Hi, so I'm Paul Murdoch and I'm going to look at three elements of wildlife photography, or I should say nature photography. Um, I'm going to look at the camera, I'm going to look at finding wildlife and taking the shots. The last year I've been shooting with this Sony Bridge camera, the A, well the 400V model. Um, if the light's right and you get lucky, you can get great shots with this. And it retails about £300, so pretty good value. There are other cameras by Nikon and Canon that are similar, but I'll talk about this one in particular, because it's the one I know. It goes to about 1200 millimetres, so which means it's, um, it can get in really close. The zoom lens is fairly important for birds especially. You'll never get close enough with an iPhone. I use automatic settings on the camera. Um, so, you know, I take most of my shots in automatic settings. In fact, most of the recent shots I've taken are in landscape setting. There is a manual setting on this, but personally I don't think it's... I don't think the camera is versatile enough to use the manual settings properly. Um, so I'll wait till I get onto my bigger camera for that. Still get perfectly adequate and in fact pretty good pictures using the automatic settings. Uh, it's probably due to the sensor. The sensor or the brain in this camera isn't as powerful as the one in my new camera. And that really helps you do the manual settings and you know, just for things like speed. So when a bird's flying, you can get a picture of it without it blurring. Anyway, um, use the cheat settings because that's what I do. Uh, and th they work pretty well. Phone cameras are getting better all the time. And for flowers and landscapes, they can be pretty good. Personally, um, I tend to bounce any decent shots I get with my main camera, which is this one, to that and do some editing on it. It's not always important, but it can make a big difference. And I tend to use it. We're surrounded by wildlife. I can hear seagulls now. Uh, and chaffinches, everything's going. Anyway, the phone is brilliant for identifying stuff as well. There are some great AI, artificial intelligence apps now as well. That say you're doing that zoology degree or botany degree. I know hundreds of species, but I don't know all the species. I don't know everything. So I still use apps to check stuff. And I'll list the apps and the phone I use at the end, okay? So I would suggest you practice on plants. Here, Archie. Oh, or dogs, or pets, things that can't run away. Oh, um, and you can focus in nicely and get used to your camera that way. Or home in on your bird feeder. Okay. Um, obviously, there's nothing here just now because I'm too close. But if you get back behind a window, even in the house, get your bird feeder outside, get your camera set up, get used to the settings, get used to shutter speeds. See if you can capture a few birds and focus. See if you can capture them landing, flying off. Um, that's a great way to spend an afternoon and get used to your camera. And it's a good practice for out, basically going outside and doing the proper wildlife stuff. So, that's the equipment side of things. But you have to get out and about to places where wildlife's going to be. To places like... Here. Or here. Or here. Ah, or even here. It's important to find the wildlife first. Know where to look and then become aware. Sounds and movement are key. So when I walk on a nice lane like this, as you can see, um, I'm continually anticipating and scanning. There might be um, a noise in the background, like the hubbub of the traffic, you can probably hear. But through all, you'll find and you pick out some bird calls eventually. There's nothing happening just now, of course. But um, a minute ago, there was a chaffinch calling. But I'll show you what I mean about this. Oops. Hear that? That was a male chaffinch. Anyway, in a minute, um, I'll show you what I mean by walking, scanning, and kind of knowing your area. Now, in this stretch of road, I know through that gate, I've seen road deer before. So I would go across and have a look. I've also seen buzzards perched in the field on the post on the opposite side. And the other side, in the other field, I've seen curlew, I've seen oyster catchers. Um, again, I would maybe peer over the hedge and just see if there are any of those birds about. Walking further down, the hedgerows are full of things. Bullfinches, especially this time of year, uh, 
feeding on the young buds and shoots of the, of the hawthorn trees. Further down, you'll get wrens and robins and hedge sparrows in the lower parts of the, of the, the bushes here too, the hedgerow. I'm always looking out for them and I'll stop from time to time. Often you'll walk past, past a bird and it'll fly away and you've, you've literally walked past it and you can get a great shot. So keep looking all the time, anticipating and listening for any calls or signs of movement that'll give a bird or an animal away. I love shooting insects as well. Not everybody's cup of tea, I know, but there are two ways to do this. One is to use a macro lens. This little thing here costs about 60 quid and it clips on to the end of your camera, most cameras. Uh, it's like a spring. And then you can use it like a macro lens and it can get in really close to things. Now that's fine if it's a shield bug or a beetle of some kind or a spider even. Um, and I just tend to go back and forward like this until I get it in focus, usually with the flash up and then click it. And that's how I take my really close macro shots. There's another way of doing it though, especially if you've got something like a butterfly, which is flighty and hard to, you, you wouldn't get that close to a butterfly very often, or maybe a wasp, and you don't want to get that close to a wasp, so you want to stay back a bit, but get a really sharp picture. I use, take this off, and just use the zoom lens part of the camera. You fully extend the lens, and your subject is about two meters away, and you can find focus in with the zoom and get really close in to something like a butterfly, you see all the hairs, the eye, everything and it's really good and I've taken, especially on a bright day you get lovely butterfly shots and wasp shots and anything you like really, using the zoom. Being prepared is also key. I used to be a Cub Scout so that wee mantra is kind of ingrained in me. I have my bag with my spare uh, batteries and there's also a spare SD card in there. I've got two spare batteries, that's over and above the one in the camera. So I've got about a full day's worth of power, I guess, uh, between those batteries. Um, what else have I got? I've also got my macro lens in here, so I can clip it on if I see a butterfly, sorry, if I see maybe a shield bug. If I see a butterfly, I'll be using that zoom technique I showed you earlier on. What else have I got? I've also got some water, in case you get very thirsty, up a hill or something like that. Um, and I've also got my camera, never in my bag actually, my camera is always in my hand. It's ready, it's switched on, um, so if something does fly up suddenly, I can just point and shoot. Nothing worse than try to dig about in your bag when you see something. The time you look up, it's gone. I have it switched on all the time. It can last about a day in standby uh, between those three batteries easily. So there's no reason not to have it switched on and just ready to go. Um, and that's what I do. So, finally, taking the shot. Personally, I use autofocus. So you press halfway down the shutter and the camera should lock on to what you're looking at, a robin or whatever it is. You might have to do it a few times because it sometimes locks on to the, a branch behind the robin or in front of the robin. Or you can kind of get a way of manually focusing and uh, fine tune it if you want that way. You can set the camera up so it will actually autofocus and then if you press a button, you can twist this and do manual focus to kind of tweak it. That's what I do. Um, so basically locate the wildlife, lock on and fine tune and then click. Practice doing this in seconds because that's all you tend to get. And take lots of shots. Chances are you'll get 19 duff ones and one cracker. Anyway, every day is a school day as I say and I'm still learning. Um, if I see a great nature picture on Facebook or Instagram, I usually ask the photographer how he or she took it. What camera, what lens, what settings. Nine out of ten times, people are more than happy to share what they do. I hope this wee glimpse into my particular style of wildlife photography has given you a few pointers. I'll probably be asking you for tips in the future when you start posting your stuff. Um, oh, and I'll list those wildlife apps as promised after this and check out my articles and photos in the Clydesider magazine when you can. Anyway, ciao for now.